section 9.2 is polar equations and graphs. Last section, we started talking about polar coordinates and introduced some polar equations. So these were two of the polar equations that we talked about, r equals a number and theta equals a number. So go ahead and pause the video and graph those two equations. So r equals some number is a circle that has a center at the origin and a radius of whatever that number is. So in this case, if r is equal to 4, I'd have a radius of 4. I have each ring be 0.5, so this would be the equation r equals 4. Theta equals some number is a line that goes through the origin and makes an angle of whatever theta is with the polar axis. So if theta equals pi over 6, it's going to be the line that goes through the origin that makes an angle of pi over 6. So on these graphs, it's basically the line that follows the line at pi over 6. Now we're going to look at a couple common equations that we usually use in rectangular form and converting them and looking at them in polar form. So first, looking at a vertical line. So a vertical line is in rectangular, x equals some number, or x equals a. So convert that into polar coordinates and see what that vertical line looks like in polar form. And then do the same thing for the specific equation, x equals 3, and then graph that. So from section 9.1, we can remember that cosine of theta equals x over r, or x is equal to r cosine theta. So therefore, x equals a would be the same thing as r cosine theta equals a. So whenever we have r cosine theta equal to a number, that's the polar equation for a vertical line. So then if we look at the example x equals 3, then in polar form that would be r cosine of theta equals 3, and that's the vertical line that goes through a radius of positive 3. So whenever we have r cosine theta equal to a number, that is a vertical line. What we'll kind of see is that sometimes there are equations that are easier to write in polar form, like r equals 4. That's a circle. All you need is just r equals 4, easier than the version in rectangular. Versus this, x equals 3, is probably easier in rectangular form than it is in polar form. So go ahead and do the same thing for the equation of a horizontal line. So from the previous section, y is equal to r sine theta. So I just replaced y with r sine theta. So r sine theta is equal to b. So whenever we have something that looks like this, r sine theta equal to a number, that's going to be the polar equation for a horizontal line. So then for this one, we have r sine theta is equal to 2. So that's going to be up 2 because it's sine. So we're going to go up 2, and that's going to be a horizontal line at r sine theta equals 2. So now we're going to look at the equation r equals 6 cosine theta, and we're going to use a table of values for theta between 0 and 2 pi to help us figure out what graph this is. So I just picked kind of easier ones, the quadrantal angles, and then the over 4s. You can fill in the middle ones too, the over 6s and the over 3s. But go ahead and pause the video, evaluate r, and see if we can figure out what kind of graph this is. So I have my table here. Some of them ended up with negative radii. So for the first one, I have 0, 6, so that's going to be this point here. In the 0 angle direction, I went out 6. Pi over 4, I'm going to go 3 root 2, which is about 4 and a quarter-ish. So in the pi over 4 direction, I went about 4 and a quarter. At pi over 2, I'm going to go 0, so that's just at the origin there. At 3 pi over 2, I'm going to go negative 3 root 2. So at 3 pi over 4, I'm going to switch over, flip across the pole, and go negative. So I end up down here. At pi, I'm going to go negative 6, which flips me back to this original point here. At 5 pi over 4, I'm going to go negative 3 root 2, which is going to flip me back to this point. At 3 pi over 2, I'm at 0. At 7 pi over 4, I'm going to go 3 root 2. And so I end up with just those four points. And so this actually ends up making a circle that's been shifted to the right, sitting on the polar axis. So whenever you have a polar equation of the form r equals a sine theta or r equals a cosine theta, that's going to be a circle that has the center on one of the polar axes. If it's cosine, it's going to be on the horizontal axis. If it's sine, it's going to be on the vertical axis. Looking at this next special polar equation, r equals theta, go ahead and pause the video and use a r theta table to help you graph this. So for the r theta table, again, I picked the quadrantal angles and the over 4s. And then since r equals theta, that just means whatever your angle is, your radius is going to be the same thing. I plugged it into my calculator just to get decimals, just it's a little bit easier to graph for your radius. So as probably makes sense by the name, it ends up being a little spiral. The next special polar equation we're going to look at are limosomes, which is the French word for snail. 
So there anything of the form r equals a plus or minus b cosine theta or r equals a plus or minus b sine theta, where a and b are both positive and not equal to each other. If a is greater than b, then there's no inner loop. If a is less than b, then there is an inner loop, which we'll talk about what that looks like in a second. So here's the first equation. So r equals 1 plus 2 cosine theta. So it's of the form of a limason. And our a value is smaller than our b value. So therefore, we're going to have an inner loop. So use an r theta table and just plot these five points. And then we'll talk about what connecting the dots looks like. So if you plug in these angles in for theta, you end up with 3, 1, negative 1, 1, and 3. So when you go out in the 0 or the 2 pi direction, you're going to go out a distance of 3. If you go in the pi over 2 direction, you're going to go up 1. If you go in the pi direction, you're going to go negative 1. So that's going to reflect you across the pole and end up on the right side. When you go 3 pi over 2, you're going to go 1, and then 2 pi is in the same place. So I can tell this has an inner loop because I have two points on the same side of the pole. So this is what it's going to look like. It's going to have a little curl in here. This is where the inner loop, and then it kind of looks like a heart circle-ish on this side. So it connects through, and then it like loops around to hit that inside one. So whenever you have a limason, something of this form that has an inner loop, it's going to be this type. So do your r theta table, and then you see you have an inner loop, and connect the dots in like that. Now we have another limason, r equals 3 plus 2 sine theta, but this time a is bigger than b, so we're not going to have an inner loop. So pause the video, make your r theta table, and plot those points, and then we'll talk about what it looks like. So here's our r theta table. This time it's sine, so it's going to be a vertical one. Instead of cosine, it's going to be horizontal. And on here, we didn't end up with any negative radii, so none of them flipped across the pole to end up two points on the same side of the pole. So that's why there's no inner loop. So at 0, we went out a distance of 3. At pi over 2, we went up a distance of 5. At pi, we went out a distance of 3. And at 3 pi over 2, we went down a distance of 1. So this is what the limasomes look like when there is no inner loop. It kind of looks like a squished heart or a heart that's not all the way down in the middle. Um, so this part doesn't loop around like the inner loop one does. It kind of just flattens out and then comes back around. So limasones are anything of the form r equals a plus or minus b cosine theta or sine theta. If a is bigger than b, there is no inner loop, so you won't have two points on the same side of the pole. If a is less than b, you will have an inner loop, so you'll have two points on the same side of the pole to loop it around. The next one that we're going to look at are cardioids, which have the same setup as a limasone, except for a and b are the same value. So we have r equals 1 minus 1 sine theta. So use an r-theta table, plot your points, and we'll see what this one looks like. So you end up with a very similar setup to the limasome because the equation is very similar. The only difference is on one of them, you'll end up with a 0. Because these two values are the same, they cancel each other out. And so you actually end up with a point at the pole, which the limasome doesn't have. So it looks much more heart-like, hence the name cardioid, because it goes down deeper than the limasone does. So a similar look just goes a little bit further to make that little heart shape at the top. The last type we're going to look at are roses. So roses are anything of the form r equals a cosine n theta and r equals a sine n theta. So on the previous ones, we never had anything multiplied by theta. Now we have something being multiplied by theta. If n is odd, whatever is being multiplied by theta, then the rose is going to have exactly that many petals. If n is even, then the rose is going to have twice that many petals. We call it a rose, but it really looks more like a daisy, not so much like a rose. So the one that we're going to look at is r equals 5 cosine 3 theta. Roses are the one polar equation that are different in the sense that when we go to graph it, we're not just going to use the quadrantal angles. We're actually going to find angles that will make it a little bit easier. So the first thing I notice is that my number that's being multiplied by theta is odd. So therefore, if it's 3, I'm going to have 3 petals. So now what I want to do is I want to find the places where the petals are going to go the furthest out. So that means I want to find where they're the longest or the radius is the longest. Well, sine and cosine, the biggest they could possibly be are 1 or negative 1. So those are going to be the places where your radius or your petals are going to be the longest. So I need to find what angles will make that true. So I want to find where cosine of 3 theta is going to be either positive 
or negative one. And I wanna find as many angles as petals as I'm gonna have. So if I'm gonna have three petals, I wanna find the first three angles that makes this true. So just like when we were solving trig equations, I have cosine of three theta is equal to plus or minus one. So where does cosine equal plus or minus one? And I want the first three places, so zero, pi, and two pi. But that's equal to whatever's inside cosine, so that's equal to three theta. So then if I wanna actually find the angles, I need to divide everything by three. So my three angles that are gonna have the longest petals are going to be zero, pi over three, and two pi over three. So these are the three angles that I'm gonna put on my r theta table. So I'm gonna put zero, pi over three, and two pi over three as my angles. So now pause the video and find the radii at those three angles and plot those three points. So at theta equals zero, you end up with five times cosine of three times zero, which is just zero. Any cosine of zero is one, so therefore you end up with just a radius of five. So at zero, I went out a distance of five. At pi over three, you get three times pi over three inside, so cosine of pi, which is negative one times five is negative five. So at pi over three, I'm gonna go a radius of negative five, so it's gonna flip me across the pole and end up down here. And then two pi over three, three times two pi over three would be two pi. Five times one is five, so at two pi over three, I'm gonna go out a distance of five. So these are my three longest petals, and then I just wanna fill in a daisy-like shape. So this is my rose with three petals. And like I said previously, it's called a rose, but it really looks more like a daisy. So anything of the form r equals a cosine in theta or r equals a in sine in theta, if n is even, then you have twice that many petals. If n is odd, you have exactly that many petals. Find the places that would make whatever cosine three theta in this case equal to positive or negative one out to as many petals as you have solve for theta, and then use those for your r theta table. So now we have another one, r equals four sine two theta, so this time n is even. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can graph this rose. So if n is even, that means I have twice that many petals. So since n is two, I'm gonna have four petals. So the first thing I did is I wanted to find the angles that would make my petals the longest. So I set sine of two theta is equal to plus or minus one and I found those places out to four because there's gonna be four petals. So that would be pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, and seven pi over two. But that's two theta, so then I divided everything by two, and I got that the angles that I wanna use on my r theta table are pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, and seven pi over four. So if you haven't already done so, pause the video, find your radii, and graph this rose. So plugging those in at pi over four, you're gonna have a radius of positive four, at three pi over four, you're gonna have a radius of negative four, so that's gonna flip you across the pole down here. At five pi over four, you're gonna have a radius of four, and at seven pi over four, you're gonna have a radius of negative four, which flips you back up here. So then just connect the dots, and this is the rows r equals four sine two theta. So this section, we have talked about polar graphs and polar equations, and using r theta tables to help us graph these special polar graphs, especially limosons, cardioids, and roses.